And then today, I guess we can talk about what we're doing today for yeah. real. Um, we are going to be doing HTV on wood, which we've done a few tutorials here and there on uh -huh. that. Um, but this is like a cute little Easter bunny tray. And so it's kind of a spinoff of the Santa tray. Yeah. Because you know everybody does the Santa tray with the deer food and all that. This is for the Easter bunny. Uh-huh. Um, and it's so cute. So let's just go ahead. We can get into it. If y'all have questions, it. feel free to ask. Absolutely. Um, but we'll go ahead and start crafting so we don't take up too much time. So we still have our make -a <laughs> screen set up and we need to... We we'll probably need to move it. It's gigantic. Yeah. So that way we could see all, everybody on Saturday. Um, so let's go overhead. I'm going to show you guys what we're making today. Um, this is like just the cutest little, it's given me like shabby chic Easter. Oh, which is my, sure. It's like my favorite Easter vibe, I think. Shabby chic vintage Easter. Yes. So what we've done is just taken a wood sign from Hobby Lobby and I got some handles from Hobby Lobby as well and just glued them on here. And then we're just going to be designing this in design space and then cutting it out of HTV and applying it. So super cute, right? Yes. And then um, I have got, so I already, I went ahead and glued on my little handles. We're going to be doing a couple other things to those. Um, I went ahead and glued them because I didn't want them to like not be glued on here initially, but you really are just going to need some super glue gel or E6000. This is a little bit more aggressive. Um, <laughs> this is probably going to be more permanent, but honestly, super glue gel is going to work just fine. I just brought two options in case you don't have one of them um, on hand. You may be able to get away with just using regular glue or regular super glue, um, but sometimes the gel is better on wood because it doesn't soak into it as easily. Um, and then I've got some white paint because we're going to kind of add some white paint on these handles. I've just got some water for my to rinse my paintbrush. I have a paintbrush, a weeding tool, a pin pin tool because we are dealing with some dainty letters today. And then I've got two colors of HTV. So I've got the, um, this is the Easy Weed Green Olive. This is like one of my favorite colors of all time. Mm -hmm. And then this is like a true carrot orange. This is actually Soft Flex HTV, but you know what? It works. It's HTV. It's going to be fine. Yep. So um, let's go ahead and get into design space. So let me get, okay. So I've already made this in design space, but I'm just going to kind of take you all through how I did it, if that makes sense. So I'm going to go and snag the two font files that I will need and then the wreath file. So let's hop on to the Makers Gonna Learn website. Also, can we talk about the new design space update, Lauren? Oh, Lauren posted all, a video on this yesterday. If you so. all have not seen, if you go to your beta version of Cricut Design Space, um, they now have, get ready for this, the <laughs> warp text function. Yes. Now, this is still in the beta function. It is not in the live version. Um, you can play around with it if you are not a Cricut Access user, but y'all, this is the only drawback for this is that you have to use Cricut, you have to have a Cricut Access membership to use this. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about, so I did make a video on this yesterday. Go check that out, watch that, because not only do I show you and we kind of play around with the warp function, um, but I show you how you can do it, y'all, for free and not have Cricut Access membership. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I really did not like about the, and I know, listen, they are still in the testing phases, so I, they, I applaud Cricut for trying to, for bettering their program, because we all know that they are behind when it comes to other, um, uh, other programs. For example, Silhouette has had this forever. They have had this for a while, this function. Literally, okay. I've been doing this in Illustrator since 2009. So yeah. I've been, like, it's just, it's like they just are so slow to come around to the new, the these features. And I honestly think they do it on purpose because it's so streamlined in Cricut Design Space. I think they want to keep it simple. Yes. Um, and so that's why they don't release so many, like, crazy, like, fun tasks or uh, like tools. And honestly, I think that they do it on purpose because they got to know. 
Yeah. They got to know everybody else was already doing it. So. Yeah. So, um, anyway, back to what, back to, the, they, they do have to make it stream on. The one thing that I was saying that I don't like is that there's no point of movement. So, if you, and I'm sorry, this the camera. The entire room. <laughs> Everything we have is like shaking. a grid system above the with yeah. like the monitors and stuff, and everything is shaking. <laughs> yes, um, but what um, what I was saying is there's not a point of movement in the crick in the cricket function. Like it's it is what it is. Like you can't change it at all. Mm -hmm. um, and there are I've seen some people that have made comments. You can do it in different programs. Absolutely, you can. You don't have to do it in the Photopea. Um, program that I show that I showed you guys. Um, you can do it in Illustrator. You can do it in Inkscape. You can do it in um, somebody dropped another one. So there's plenty of different programs that you can do this in. Um, but the Photopea one was free. You don't have to have anything else. Um, so yeah. Okay. So I've got. I downloaded my font. Um, I went ahead and pulled pulled in my wreath file. If you all missed um, me doing that, it was the Omni font, demonstrate font, and then the wreath file is literally just called wreath. Um, and I went ahead and pulled in this image and then I saved my work and then hit view and reload after I installed those fonts. That way all my fonts are on my design space. But before we do anything else in design space, we need to measure our area on our little tray. So let's go overhead. Am I centered? There? So let's go ahead and measure. Actually, I'm just going to measure in between our handles. So like 10 and a half. We don't need to measure all the way across because like we're not going to be putting words here. So 10 and a half by eight. Okay, let's go back into design space. Um, and what I'm going to do here is pull in a basic shape. So I'm going to be doing an oval and I'm just going to pull it over here. Let's go ahead and unlock it. And then we can make this the size that we just measured. So what we say 10 by eight and a half. Y'all know I can't remember numbers to save my life. Okay. So that's kind of like the area that we're working with. So I'm going to turn this into a guide okay so we're just kind of using this so we know how to where to place everything now if you for some reason can't find this um, door sign just measure whatever sign or whatever tray that you're actually placing the HTV on and put those measurements into design space okay um, so I've got my area laid out and then obviously I want to have a little a little wreath for my drink and a wreath for my snack so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm on to, I'm going to send this guide to the back so I don't keep on clicking on it. So we'll send it to the back and then I'm just going to open up a text box and let's pull it over here so we can have it where we're needing it and we can just start out typing whatever we want. So I'm going to be using Omni for some of this text. So I'm going to go to my system fonts and you could search it here, excuse me. Okay, and this is a very thin font. Um, a lot of people are like, how do you cut such small fonts? My advice for you all is good quality vinyl. Uh, if I'm using Caesar Easyweed, I can cut these dainty fonts so easily. Um, if I was using a bad quality um, font, or I'm sorry, a bad quality vinyl, this would not work nearly as easily. So I always recommend Caesar Easy Weed. It, it weeds the best. It literally is an easy weed. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put thanks for hopping. Bye. Okay. And the reason that my letters are overlapped over here is because I think when I pulled this in here, I didn't have the font downloaded yet and it smushed my letters together. So it's just a yeah. formatting issue. Listen, it was doing that to um, me with a font that I didn't have downloaded, but it was spreading it apart. Yes, and not it'll, squishing. It'll it. do one or the other yeah. sometimes. Hannah, these circle leaves are an MGL SVG. They are, if you type in wreath on in a Mexican Learn website, it'll pop up. I filmed before we did this, and so I can't talk. Yeah, it's, it's one of those days, it's one of those days that um, we are showing up 
but because our brains are mush, but we love you guys, so yes. we're here. Yeah, I literally was filming and like finished like 20 minutes before we started on the live. So my brain is a little bit uh, miswired right now. But okay, so I selected both wreaths and then I wanted to align them. So I went align and center vertically. This is going to make them perfectly straight across from each other. And then I'm going to add in the text for the bottom. Now, if you are just super, super intimidated by these tiny letters, or if you are easily frustrated by weeding the tiny letters, honestly, you could just put drink and snack and like put that on the bottom edge there Yeah. instead of doing like, here's a drink in case you're thirsty. You know what I'm saying? Like that's kind of long, uh -huh. but it looks cute. So, right. you know, it's totally up to you. So if you wanted to just put drink you could come down here and drop it um, and it would be like a lot less text. and what would be really cute is you could even and this is more of a little bit of an advanced if you just did that you could curve the oh you were already doing it oh we were thinking the same thing we were thing. thinking the same thing i was curving it to that circle oh my gosh we're on the same wavelength okay I mean, honestly when are we not i know Okay, snack, and I'm going to shrink it down and curve it up, and then um, there you go. I should have shrunk that down a little bit smaller. Yeah, Lorraine, it is the same font as the one in the finished design. It's just for some reason when we pulled in the completed project, um, it was, uh, the it like smushed the words together, but I promise it's the same font. Yes. So you could do something like that if you wanted. Just do drink and snack. Um, that way you're not having to weed such teeny weeny letters. And really like you could just go without any at all if you really wanted to. And you could just put in like love and the babe and the child's name, almost said the baby's name, baby, child, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. um, and then so now I'm gonna go in and add all of my script text. So let's type in Easter Bunny, okay. Um, and we're using Demonstrate. Y'all know I use this font like literally every day. It's, Demonstrate is one of my favorites. It really, it's one of my favorites too. I, I used it today on something else. And then I'm just going to shrink this until it fits. Okay. And then duplicate. And then we're going to put love fill in the blank. I'll put Hallie Quinn. This is my best friend's daughter's name. Okay, Hallie Quinn, and then I'm gonna, I want those to be closer together, so I'm gonna go to Advanced and Ungroup to Lines, and then I can manually adjust the lines of that text box. So I can either use my arrows to bump it up, or I can just literally take the mouse and pull it up there. So now it's a little bit closer, and I can select one text box, hold the Shift key down, and select the other one and then just pop it right here. And I can even make this a little bit bigger if I wanted to. And then, so that's that's pretty much it as far as the designing portion. That part. Anybody have questions? Nope, recheck the dimensions of your guide really quick. Okay, yes ma'am. Are they off? 10 by eight and a half? I think someone was saying it was 10 and a half by eight is what you originally made. Oh, see, I told you guys, 10 and a half by eight. Okay, let's change the guide and see um, how much off we are. We shouldn't be too much off though. Let's see. So we might need to make everything like a hair smaller so that it doesn't, look, we, we do. We probably need to make it a little bit smaller. So let me hide our oval. I'm gonna click and drag everything and just literally shrink it down a little bit and then go and show the oval again. Okay, thanks guys. Thanks for the assistance there. There you go. Love it. So, I mean, as easy as that. So now what I wanna show you all is how to cut everything that we want to be orange on the same sheet of orange and then everything that we want to be green out of the same sheet of green. And this is gonna help us line everything up really nicely. Um, what I did, and we can go overhead. So I already cut and weeded these out. I'm gonna show you how I did this here in just a second. Um, I actually cut all of the green together 
And then I did all of the orange separately because the orange, there wasn't nearly as much orange and I could just kind of manually go in and place it. But I did cut all of the green together. That way, whenever we go to apply it to our piece, um, I'm not having to go in and like place everything and make sure these are in line and make sure all of this is centered. Um, this way, it's gonna allow me to just put it on there and know that it's centered, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So we've got the green. And then um, I just did like the Easter Bunny and then these two little sections separately, okay? So up in design space, I'm going to select everything that needs to be green. Now, I like to use my layers panel for this, um, mainly because it's easier to select different things, but you can either do it that way by just selecting here and then holding the shift key and selecting like that. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna delete this because it's like right in the way and it's messing with my layers panel. So I'm gonna go over here and select deer and then we want to do thanks for hopping by. So hold the shift key down, select the layer that you want, and then we want the wreaths. Those are gonna be green. And what else is green? Uh, Love Hallie Quinn. Right. Okay. So all of that's green. So what I'm gonna do is come up here next to the operations menu and I'm gonna change all of that to this dark green color. And it's kind of hard like to see that the color changed, but it did. And then you can go in and select Easter Bunny, drink and snack. And those are all gonna be orange. And so while I have those selected, I'm gonna go ahead, well, sorry. We're not gonna cut those on one big thing. Like I was saying earlier, they're so small. If I cut the Easter Bunny and then drink and snack, it's gonna take up like this whole section of the orange. Does that make sense, Lauren? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna not group those together. Right. But I am gonna group the deer, the thanks for hopping by, the wreaths, and the love, Hallie Quinn. I'm gonna group those all together. So yes. go back in the layers panel, select them, and then we are going to attach them together that way they cut exactly where they're at in design space. So I feel like a lot of our friends while you're doing that will sometimes attach one color and then attach another color. And that is great. That is a great mm -hmm. way you can do that. However, if you're wanting to try to save vinyl, but you want to keep everything in alignment, pick the color that you use the most of and attach all of those things. Yes. And then if you have a secondary or a third tertiary color, a third color, however you want to call tertiary. it. Tertiary. That's, you know, like primary, color. secondary, tertiary colors. You didn't learn that in art class? Oh, no, I know. Okay. It's just, <laughs> I haven't heard it in a long time. It's a long, but old one. <laughs> anyway, um, you can, you don't have to attach those. They'll all cut on the same mat out of the same color, but mm -hmm. they're easily placed if you have a guide. Yes. That's what I was getting at. That way you can still say vinyl. Right. And still have a guide. Yes. And so whenever we go to make it, you all can get a better visual for what we're doing here. Um, when you get to the make it screen, you can see our orange stuff is just going to line up along this top edge. Now, if you're using like a scrap piece and it's only like four by six, you can move your stuff around so that it fits nicely on your piece of vinyl. Um, we've got like almost an entire piece, so I could just cut it on this top edge and be good to go. Um, I would need to mirror everything because we're using HTV. And then in the green layer, I've got everything exactly where it's supposed to go. And I like this because this is like the bulk of our design and I can just go in and plug those orange pieces in. Yes. But I do want to mirror it as well because we're using HTV on here as well. So make sure you're always mirroring your heat transfer vinyl. Yeah, and Kelly asked, did we attach or flatten? We attached mm -hmm. because we're using vinyl, heat transfer vinyl to be specific. Yes. And flatten is when you do a print and cut. Yes. So those it are was PNG attached. images. Yes. So we're attaching everything. This is perfectly good to go. And then you're gonna select continue and we're using an Explore 3. And I always cut my heat transfer vinyl on everyday iron on. And I want you all to make sure that you're checking which box is highlighted on the left side. So like make sure that you're not laying your orange down right now because it has our green highlighted. So you would just take your standard grip mat and where did I put my mat at? Here she is. Um, you're just going to take your standard grip mat. Let me move all this stuff out of the way. Okay. 
and obviously this green is not big enough, but I've already cut it out. I just want to show you all how you would lay your vinyl. So you would take your piece of vinyl and you're going to lay the shiny side facing the mat because it's heat transfer vinyl. Okay, so just line it up and then you would send it through the Cricut this way. Okay, so you would cut your green out and then you're going to weed everything around your letters and you're going to leave the wreath and the words, obviously. And that is it. That would be it for the green. Laura had a good question. Is there okay. a difference between HTV and Cricut Everyday Iron On? Cricut has just branded their, um, has just named their brand of heat transfer vinyl Everyday Iron On. Yes. But it is still uh, heat transfer vinyl. That's just what they call their heat transfer vinyl. Yes. It gets confusing because there's so many brands of heat transfer vinyl, but it's the same type of product. Yes. So you have Caesar Easy Weed, which is a heat transfer vinyl. Mm -hmm. You have Cricut Everyday Iron On, which is still a heat transfer vinyl. Yeah. They're all the same, but they, I guess each company wants to try to differentiate themselves. Yes. And be different. So they call it different things, which unfortunately can be confusing for consumers. Yes. Now, once you get into it a lot, you kind of learn like what's what, um, because I was definitely confused in the beginning. I was like, I don't understand what's happening. Um, but anyway, so you're going to go ahead and cut your green out. Go ahead and cut your orange out using the same cut settings. You just use a standard fine point blade for this. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and turn my Cricut Mini Easy Press on. So this is the Mini Easy Press. If you all have been here for any amount of time, you know that we use this like literally almost every day. And I'm going to put this on the medium heat setting. Okay, it does not need to be any hotter than that. It will mess up and like smudge your words around and stuff. So make sure you're not going any hotter than the medium heat setting. And I'm just going to sit this to the side and let it heat up. And then while it's doing that, I'm going to add, and I don't know if y'all can tell on the screen, but these are like a different shade of white. And I want this to look like it came this way. And so like on this one, I added some white chalk paint to the handles. You can definitely see a difference here. I don't know if you can see that on the screen. Can y'all tell the difference, Lauren, Sadie? Can y'all see that? What? Oh, yes, in the handle? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I just feel like I needed to, and I think you probably, it's more noticeable in real life. Um, cause I'm not super picky about stuff like that, but I just feel like it looks like such a different shade of white. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of white chalk paint. Now I'm using the Starcraft chalk and mineral, um, chalk paint for this. Um, it has the same finish as the sign that I've got. And I'm just going to get a little bit and kind of wipe off any excess. And I'm just going to add some of this white to my handles. And this is just going to kind of mesh everything together. So we're kind of concealing that cream color because the cream is just not, not matching for me. Okay, so I'm going to do this to both. And you don't need a lot. Like I'm not completely covering them because I want to still give it some dimension. But I'm just kind of adding a little bit. Um, Brenda asked, are you using HTV instead of permanent vinyl for this project as a personal preference? Yes. I personally like to use HTV on wood because I feel like it's more permanent to me. Um, so, you know, if this is something that you maybe want to take off and reuse for like a Santa tray or something, you could use just like adhesive vinyl. Um, but I really like HTV on wood. I just, I just like it. I feel like it like melts into the wood grain and I just really like it. So. Um, let's dismiss the fact that my eye is missing in my thanks for hopping by. Um, we're just going to act your e like in your, and the E in your, let's act like it's not happening. Okay. You're going to, it's going to get added on after this. We promise. Yeah, I'll add it in. I would never let you guys down like that. No. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and lay down my green vinyl and my heat press is ready to go. Okay, so one thing about whenever you apply HTV to wood, it likes to slide around. So don't get crazy and like get in here and start going like crazy. It adheres very quickly um, and it moves. And I don't know, I think it's just with the adhesive and the texture of the wood, it likes to move a little bit. So 
I'm just gonna go over this very delicately, okay? And I'm gonna work my way from one side to the other. And I even like to go over one section very slowly and then start to kind of pull this up and make sure that it's adhering down. So I'm just gonna go over this bottom section. So this is a hot to warm peel, okay? And then I'm just gonna keep ironing kind of as I go. Remember, you don't wanna do too much movement or too much pressure. Then after you do this a few times, you'll get the hang of it. It's really not that difficult. I'm just spelling it out for you guys. That way you know exactly what to expect whenever you go to do this yourself. So it adheres so well, like it just sticks right on there, right mm -hmm. when you apply the heat. It's really nice. Um, so people, what level are you on with the mini easy press, which I guess to, I'm assuming two? Yes, I'm on medium. And um, don't go any hotter than that. Yeah. And then somebody, um, do all mini presses have the option of a heat setting? If you get an off brand that's not Cricut, we can't attest, I guess, to that. Right. Um, but the all Cricut has three levels. You press it once for one, twice for two, three for the three times, and then four times that extra time to turn it off. Yes. Um, someone mentioned using washi tape or heat tape to secure the placement. So it's not, it's, it's hard to explain. If you guys have ever done HTV on wood, I feel like you understand what I'm saying. So it's almost like the letters, like the vinyl is moving underneath the transfer yes. sheet. And so that's what's moving. And I can't really control that. I mean, I can, when you do it, you'll understand what I'm trying to say. But um, yeah, I don't think that washi tape would help it from moving because that's not really what's moving. But that is a good suggestion. The carrier type. sheet isn't moving. Right. It's if you are not the careful vinyl. and you're using too much heat when you are doing dainty words on wood. Mm -hmm. If you're doing too much heat and too much pressure, then it, it's like the... Um, adhesion on the back of the HTV starts slipping. Right, right, exactly. Um, and Bead and Tiger made a really good point about um, if you did this project using adhesive vinyl, like permanent vinyl or removable vinyl, it's very hard to weed dainty words like this. And so HTV is really good and easy to weed when you're working with tiny, tiny letters uh, because it has the transfer tape built in. Um, and adhesive vinyl is just notorious for being hard to weed when you're working with small letters and stuff. So mm -hmm. I, I try to use HTV, honestly, any chance that I can. Yeah. If I can put HTV, I'm probably going to do that. Yes. Um, so I've got Easter Bunny right here. Now this is exposed to my iron, to my mini press. And so I don't want that. So I'm going to take this old carrier sheet. I'm just going to lay it down here. You can reuse your old carrier sheets. I like to do that. Also, Christy asked what a regular iron work. Um, I, when I first started using a die cutting machine, I didn't know there was a such thing as a mini easy press or a Cricut Same. press or whatever. So I always used an iron. The only thing is your household iron sometimes will not give the same even amount of heat across the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I always had the issue with my HTV coming up off of shirts because it wasn't getting hot enough. Right. So you can, it's doable. Just know that if you are having those issues, that might be why. Yep. I did the same thing. I used to just use a regular one. Now, if y'all are in the market and you're like, I need a new crafting iron, the Cricut Mini Easy Press is my favorite. You can oh, use for it for, sure. I mean, even though it's small, you can do t-shirts and everything. I mean, if you're like making and selling a bunch of t-shirts, I wouldn't recommend it. But like if you're making them for personal use, the Cricut Mini Easy Press, it's small, it's, yeah. mo it's mobile, like it's just really good. So I'm just going to leave. I'm going to just be very careful up here on the tops. I would just put it all over the whole thing. Well, yeah, we could, I guess. Because you can still, yeah. it'll still, the heat will still get through both carrier sheets. Let's just, yeah. So Lauren's saying to lay it over the entire thing. And then we can just go in here and iron and just be super careful. Like I said, this adheres really quickly, even through both of the carrier sheets. Yeah. Okay, then I'm just going to very slowly pull this up. 
Hannah made the comment, I never seem to get the bubbles when using HTV. That's gonna be, honestly, the bubbles, in my opinion, when you're doing it on shirts, I for sure get bubbles. Mm -hmm. When I'm doing it on other surfaces, you're not going to get the bubbles like you do when you're doing it on fabric. The only time that I do get bubbles when I'm doing HTV on other surfaces is like if it's a big solid piece of HTV. So we actually have a master class coming up and I was having issues with the HTV because it was a silhouette portrait. It's this month's master class. It was a silhouette portrait and I was having issues with the bubbles and I'd have to like go back over it with the heat, which is what's really nice about the wood is you can go back over it and like kind of iron the bubbles out. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's like what I normally do. If I have any, I can just iron them out. Y'all, that silhouette. Um, um, when you are ironing HTV on wood, people are asking, do you have to seal the wood before you put HTV on it? Or do you have to wipe the tray down? All this other stuff. Mm -hmm. No, we just go straight in on the wood. Yeah, we just, we just go in for it. Now, you could seal it afterwards if you wanted to. I'm going to cut this string off because we don't need it. Um, and you can actually get pliers and pull the staples out if you wanted to. Um, but, yeah, you don't need to seal it. And, I mean, unless y'all are really going to be eating off of this, this is like a decorative tray. Yeah, this is more of a decorative piece. This is not a piece that we're going to be serving anything off of. Yes, and so that's it. can't wait to get started and like I know. really do a deep dive into this and talk about it because if you guys didn't know there's a new feature Cricut came out with a new feature last night design space surprise surprise Tanner sent us a link at like I don't know what time it was it was very late I was actually in design space last night when he sent it I never craft at home I know and I was making a bunch of little paper candy Grinches and I was like mm, I'm gonna get in design space and see what this is about so I mean I think it's pretty cool we can share our opinions when we get into it we will for sure share our opinions but yeah, should we like get into it? Cause I feel like there's a lot of sticker tips and tricks and hacks, if you will. So yes. let's show them. Let's, let's do it. Let's go ahead and talk about this new update. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number one, you do have to be on a desktop. We said that a while ago. Um, so you have to be on a desktop to use this. Um, if you don't have a desktop, we were reading that there is possibility that this will be rolled out later on for iPad and phone users, but right now it is just strictly limited to the desktop, um, and it is in beta version. So, what is beta version? Let's talk about what beta version is, what that means. Beta version is like the second level of testing. There is alpha version, and then there's beta version, and then there's live. So alpha is like in-house, working on it, just at the Cricut, like just people that work in Cricut have, know about it. And then once they feel like it's ready to come, semi come to market, then it goes into beta version. Beta version is like, hey, we're putting this out there. We want to know if there are any glitches. Use it. Tell us what you think. Let us fix the bugs. Yes. That is beta version. And then from beta version, it will then jump over to live version, meaning that it is absolutely 100% ready to go. It's there, okay? Mm -hmm. So di if you didn't know, did you know that you can switch back and forth between live and beta version in Cricut Design Space? If you didn't, I'm here to teach you exactly how to do that. So just hold up. We're going to do that. I'm going to teach you how to, yes, desktop and... When I say desktop, I'm meaning a computer, laptop or desktop. Yes. That's the same thing. Um, but anyway, I'm going to teach you how to go from live to beta version. If you've never done that before, we are going to, I'm going to teach you how to um, update your design space. If you think you need to update to a newer version, I'm going to show you where you can go to find that and update. And then we'll just kind of look around in settings, play around a little bit. Um, and I'll show you a couple different things. And then we're going to jump into the sticker making. The what? Explain what is it again? The create, create sticker. sticker. I don't That's know. It. I don't. I don't love that. I don't love the name. Create sticker. 
Yeah. It's like a, like a noun. They're like using it as a noun. The create sticker function. Yeah, I'm not I'm not a fan, but you know, I don't work for we cricket. Don't. <laughs> we don't get to make that stuff up. So. Yeah. I don't work for cricket. So anyway. <laughs> anyway, so let's go ahead and jump over to our share screen. And we'll do this later. Here is where we're gonna start on our home tab, okay? So to find out whether you are in live or beta version, what you're gonna do is you're gonna come over here to your settings or your actual, your, like your profile area. And then you hit that arrow down and then you're gonna scroll down to here where it says settings, okay? So we're going to click on settings and here you're gonna see general machines, canvas, all of this different stuff in, stuff in settings, okay? So to go back and forth between live and beta, you can see here three down, it says application experience, okay? At application experience, you are going to see, you can see here currently we are in the live version and I'll show you, because we're in live version, there is nothing up here that says create sticker, okay? Nothing there. So let's go back to our settings, and we are going to click from live to beta, okay? Now, it's not gonna do anything when you just click beta. What you have to do is after you click beta, you then have to select done. So now you see it has closed design space out. We are reloading and then I'm going to show you guys where you're going to be able to find this. Yes. Um, does this feature include the Joy Original? Unfortunately, no it does not because the Joy Original does not have print and cut features. Right. So you're not going to be able to use it on a joy. You're probably going to be able to play around with it, but you you're can. not going to be able to cut because the original joy does not have um, print and cut features. Okay? And anybody, any of y'all can get in there and play around with Absolutely. this, but you're not going to be able to actually go to the make it screen where you cut it and stuff. Right. So, so now we can go to new project and you can see here, let's just upload a random PNG. There's a good one. Add it to Canvas. So now you can see here we have the create sticker function. Y'all, yes. that's it. So we go from live to beta, and that's where your create sticker function is going to show up. Right here, right smack dab in the middle, okay? And all you have to do is upload a PNG. This is one of our um, new PNGs on our website that I love. Look, clearly it's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. Clearly. <laughs> Mine's on my table. I, actually, now I just realized I have two two water cups. I have Show three them cups. your fancy new water cup. I love oh. it. Isn't it pretty? It's matte to it's gloss. It's matte, matte to shiny. I love. Well, they I got it with my vinyl. Rewards. They Let's need to make vinyl that is matte to gloss. <gasps> they for sure need to make a matte to shiny vinyl. Yes, I think that that should be. If we ever have a vinyl line, yes, add it to the list. Matte to gloss. Absolutely, hundred <laughs> percent. Okay, so anyway, what we're gonna do? I'm gonna size this up a little bit. Um, yeah, it's a little big. It's. I get it. There we go. Fine. So just so we can see it, now the create sticker function, I'm gonna click the arrow pointing down and I'm gonna move this over so that we can play around with it. Also, did you know that you can move move these boxes? I so love like, that. So like if I click off of it, every time I click back, it's just gonna pop up down here away from everything or you can move it over here. It's very I, helpful. It's very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, we're going to check it out. So once you click that arrow pointing down on the create sticker, there are a couple different options for you. So we will start out with the die cut option. So what die cut means is die cut means it cuts all the way through the material to the back, through the backer, okay? So that is cutting all the way through the backer so that you have a sticker that cuts out like this. These are all die cut stickers because they're not on one page, okay? These are all die cut stickers. It's not like a sheet of stickers. Right, it's not a sheet of stickers. 
Annette, yes, you do have to have Cricut access, but if you'll stick around with me, I'm going to show you um, how we can do this without even having to do without even having to have Cricut access. Okay, so die cut. Let's click on die cut. What that does is that is going that shows you once you click die cut, it just it gives you a sticker like it's cutting all the way around. Now this it does go ahead and fill in the interior shapes so you can toggle back and forth if you want that interior shape cut or if you don't i like that feature mm -hmm. pretty nice yeah it is um you can also add a border if you want to so you can do thin and then you can change your border color you can do standard wide and then you have your custom, okay? Y'all, can I just be real honest with you? Do you want to know what that is? <laughs> That's just your offset feature. It's literally. It's literally just your offset feature. It's like people, uh, in my brain, like at Cricut, people were complaining that they didn't know how to easily make stickers and they were trying to say like, use the offset, use the offset. And they were like, you know what? Forget it. Let's just, Let's just add a button. Right. But it's the same thing. Yes. It's, it's, the same it's thing. literally the exact same thing as offset. The only difference is you don't have to go back through and flatten. Yeah, like it, it just skips that flatten it step. It skips for the you. flatten step. Mm -hmm. um, and that's it. Like I think that, they're just trying it. to like help out customer I do. service. <laughs> I think it's I think it's a customer service thing. I think mm -hmm. they're trying to simplify it and I appreciate that. Yeah. I really do appreciate the fact that um, it is. Yeah, I mean, it's not as customizable as offset. Megan brought that up. It is still, I mean, you can still, you know, contour or leave. You can do your colors here, type in your codes, whatever. Like it's still possible to do all of this. Um, but you know, it's, it's an option. So that's your border fill color. You can add as many or as not. Um, yes, it's like I just said, it's offset without needing to flatten. Um, we wouldn't need to necessarily slice, but yes, the, all it is is offset without having to flatten. Mm -hmm. Here is back to your thin. So if we go back that, and then once we hit apply, there you go. You go to make it. Um, I don't know why. That's a new, that's an This update. is a new feature. Yeah. I'm not really a fan of it right now. I, I don't hate it, but I'm really good about saving my projects. I've like gotten a habit of it, right. but I think it's really helpful for people when they make something and they go straight to make it and then the something messes up on their machine and they have to close out Cricut. I get this that. This is helping them remember what? to save. Mm -hmm. I yeah. get that. I yeah. get that. Um, so, and I mean, that's it. That's it for, for die cut. Now, one thing I will say. Let's go back here. We're gonna to go to edit sticker. You can actually undo this. You're back to your original PNG. I do love that. I do like that. Mm -hmm. It does make it easy. Um, now let's go to kiss cut. So kiss cut is just cutting through your printable material and then leaving the liner intact. So that's meaning if you want to do a sheet of stickers, let's say you're making a, I don't know, a sheet of stickers for your cl a classroom or for your child or whoever, it doesn't matter. Let's just say you want a full sheet of stickers, but you want it to remain on the sheet because you just want to hand them the sheet. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's what a kiss cut is. It just cuts through your first layer of material and not your backer, okay? Carol says, yes, but still Cricut should not make it available to access members. I get where you're coming from, I really do, um, but Access is how Cricut makes their money. So as a company, it makes sense for them as a company. As a consumer, it does get a little frustrating. Mm -hmm. I 100% understand. But we can do this without having access. Right. You can do this without having access. We don't need the Create Sticker to necessarily yeah. make Create Stickers. No, <laughs> you do not need the Create Sticker function. We're just showing it to you talking about it, pros and cons. Mm -hmm. We'll let you make your decision um, after the fact. And like we've said before, the biggest thing about Cricut Access that 
I don't want to say bothers me, but it's just like, uh, it's kind of like a knife to the gut is the fact that if you create things using Cricut Access, fonts, cut files, features, whatever, if you decide later down the road that, you know, I'm not using my Cricut as much. I don't want Cricut Access anymore. Right. You lose access. You literally lose access to all of that stuff that you created using those fonts, files, features. Like no matter how long it took you, it doesn't no matter. No matter how long. It's gone. Once you get rid of Cricut Access, you get rid of those projects. Yep. And that's very much so like Audible. I am obsessed <laughs> with Audible and listening to books, but did you not know that if you no longer want Audible subscription, you lose access to all the books you purchased. What? Yes. No, that's not okay. It's not okay. Just like with Cricut Access, if you have created something, I don't feel like it's okay later on down the road that you don't have access to it anymore. So it would make sense to me if they took access away and didn't allow you access to the free images they offered. But if you purchase an image on Cricut Access, you should have 100% access to that file 100% of the time. You should. Absolutely. But you don't. Absolutely, you should. Yeah. So the good part about it, though, and yeah, I am going to be that person and I am going to plug our membership because I'm going to teach you how you can do this without having Cricut access. And did you know that if you use one of our files and you decide two years down the road, because I think you're going to stay with us for a while because you're, we, we're continually making new things, creating new things, giving you new stuff. Those files, once you download them, they're yours. We don't take them back. We don't say you can't use that anymore. That's mm -hmm. not us. That's not our motto. That's not how we work here. Now you may lose co commercial license. You are going to use co lose commercial license if you are not a member. But right. as long as you say a member, you have commercial license to sell mm -hmm. your projects. But it's one of those things like you still have personal use. You can still use it if you yeah. really need to. For your all own crafty needs. So anyway, yes, it is it is kind of shady. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, but, but that's, that's the thing is here at Maker's Gonna Learn, we don't like it, so we're not going to be that. Right. We're going to be the complete opposite. Once you download it, there you go. Mm -hmm. It's yours. So, anyway, we're going to go back. Let's talk about the Kiss Cut. So, like I said, the Kiss Cut cuts through the material on the top, leaving the backer. So, if you select Kiss Cut, same thing. It's going to pop up just like this. You can toggle on or off your interior shape you want it on you want it off whatever um you can add your border then standard we'll leave it at standard and we'll change it to you know something different so you can see okay so that's our border feel on a standard with a kiss cut now one thing i do like about this this is probably my favorite feature if you do have Cricut Access and you plan on keeping it, this is probably my favorite feature is having the die cut edge, okay? So you can toggle that on and you can see, and I wanna zoom in, so, oh no. Let's do that again, okay. Kiss cut, we're gonna do a standard border. Let's change the color to something cooler than that. Let's go a little blue with it. Uh, too much blue. Let's go back a little. Green. I have a question here okay. in a second. Okay. So border fill, you can see this. Um, I want to toggle this interior shape out. Okay. And then let's say I want to turn the die cut edge on. So do y'all see where it has two edges? Yes. Okay. So if I hit apply, um, Corinne. Corinne's here. First of all, thanks for joining us. Um, second of all, you are 100% correct. Mm -hmm. As a Cricut user and a Cricut owner, this is not the update that we wanted. Is it nice? It's okay. It's okay. It makes it simple. I feel like it does make it simpler, especially for our new Cricut users. Absolutely. But you're right. This is not what we ask for. This is not what we want. Like if there was a list of five things, it's not on my top five. No. It's not. <laughs> or like anybody else's, maybe. Maybe but it not, was on your top five. But I'm sorry. I'm not hating it. No. A hundred percent. Like, I'm not. I'm not. They're <laughs> working hard to update things for us, and I see and appreciate that, but I think there's, there's just a lot of other things we could have done. Mm, yeah. You know? You know, whatever. I digress. 
I digress. <laughs> so anyway, what you see the double edges here. What this is going to do is it's going to kiss cut this, okay? And then it's going to actually cut through the backer here. So you gives you an easy peel sticker. But y'all, we can do this ourselves. Mm -hmm. We can do it ourselves. Oh, so. let me ask the question before you carry on to show them how to do it yourself. Okay. What would happen if you do like three kiss cut stickers and three die cut stickers on one print then cut sheet? I want to know. It would do the same. It would do. So it would cut all the way through on the three and mm -hmm. then it would not cut all the way through on the other ones? Yes. Really? Yeah, I would think so. Because like... Do you see what I'm saying? Because yeah, well, you just pick your cut settings whenever you go to the cut settings. Well, I think what it's doing is it will work with um, this and then it's Like it's going programmed to know the cut settings. Yes. But I want to know. I want to know. I get it. I okay. get it. Well, maybe we'll have to play around with it later. Because I want to know. Like, I, I just, you can't normally do more than one type of cut on a mat. Do you know what I'm saying? No, I get it. So I'm Well, it's just like how I'm fixing to show them. It's like tripling up the cuts to get it all the way through. Right. On the same pressure. Yeah, that's what... So I would think that would be what it would do. That's kind of what I'm thinking too. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Food for thought. Okay. Christine asked a really good question. What's the difference between easy peel sticker and a kiss cut? So a kiss cut is just going to... It's kind of like that... that the fine point blade barely touches the top layer of the sticker paper, but it doesn't cut through that backer. That is a kiss cut. It's like kissing up against the, the, um, the material. The easy peel is going to give you an edge. And I'm going to show you how to do an easy peel sticker too. Um, this is going to give you an edge to like, if I wanted to do give a sticker like this and we'll go overhead this sticker doesn't necessarily, it's not the easiest to peel because I have to get in between that sticker paper and the backer. So what an easy peel sticker does is it cuts another offset that is, is the backer so you can just grab it and peel it. Mm -hmm. Okay? So. That's more of like a sellable sticker feature, like something uh, you'd make when you sell stickers. Yes, yes. So an easy peel sticker is going to be, if you sell stickers, or you give them, um, or you give them to people. That's going to be like an easy. If you do like one-off stickers, that's going to be what you need easy peel stickers for. So let's let's talk about the difference. Die cut sticker is this cutting all the way through with the backer still attached, but no edge on it. Okay, this is a die cut sticker. A kiss cut sticker is if we had a full sheet of these and all of these stickers were still on the backer. Okay. And then an easy peel is going to have an edge and we're going to do kiss cut. I already have the die cut here. This is just your standard die cut sticker. We are going to do a couple kiss cut and a couple die cut stickers on one page and I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Okay. So. Um, Sarah asks, is the max print and cut size change with the new update? So they actually updated the max print and cut size um, a couple months ago, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. And you can act, you can go, well, so let's go to our settings and I'll show you if you go to, no, no, load top. Okay, print and cut page size. Ours automatically right now in our settings reverts to A3, which is 11.7 by 16. And you can see here, these are all of this, the sizes that you can print with print and cut feature now. So you can do an 11 by 17, um, which is larger than what we did. You can do, which we already had eight and a half by 11 and eight and a half by 14 before. Um, but you can do A3 and tabloid now, just so you know. I'm actually, while I'm in here, gonna change this to eight and a half by 11 because that's going to be our standard sticker paper. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm going to change this because we are using the Joy Extra today. And you, it, I didn't plug this bad boy oh, up. Let me get you some cords. So what we're going to do, I'm going to come back. Let's go back to our share screen real quick. I'm going to undo this sticker and we are going to build stickers together. Okay. And we're going to 
show you guys how to do this without having the create sticker function. No, April, this does not only work with the Joy Extra machine. We literally, is that the right one? I don't know. Plug it in and see what happens. Plug it in, plug, plug it in. in. Oh my gosh, do they still do that? I don't know. Is that for Breeze? <laughs> <gasps> Look, it came on. Oh. Magic. Magic's happening. Okay, beautiful. Um, yes, we found the cord or one that fits at least. Anyway, okay. So we are gonna do a couple kiss cut stickers and then I'm going to show you how to do uh, easy peel stickers. Now, so first thing, um, would kiss cut work on a laminated sheet too, like a waterproof paper? So if you're putting your waterproof paper over top of your sticker sheet, uh, it's really gonna depend on the material that you use. I know that like Starcraft has their own waterproof sticker paper. There's lots of different brands out They're there. They're kind of thick, so they you're gonna need extra thick. cuts. They are thick, so I would probably, I don't know. It really, it's, you're gonna have to play around with your material, especially with these new settings that Cricut came out with when they came out, when they reintroduced us to their sticker paper. Um, their settings changed mm -hmm. and like the setting that I used to use on sticker paper, like I can't use it anymore. So anyway, back to our share screen, let's start with our stickers. So I'm going to go ahead, um, and see if we, let's go to our website. First of all, let's go to print and cut and let's just see some of our files and we'll just use some of our, I don't want to do like 10 Stanley's. First of all, I'm obsessed with this Marion Bright. Like, I don't know why this wasn't there before Christmas. I would have used it so many times. Mm -hmm. It's cute. Um, well, because we did giving, Christmas so early. It's giving mid-century modern. It's giving, like, I'm obsessed. Yeah, I love it. Uh, but first of all, I love this Lucky You. We're going to download that. We're going to use that one. I almost used that today. And there's another Ooh. one, and it's, a, it's cherries, and they're dice. And it was giving me, like, that kind of vibe the same as the lucky you right i love our valentine's vibes. that one's going on my computer as yes. one of my stickers that's cute um you're I the like, yeet of my i haul. like the yeet of my haul too <laughs> <laughs> so um cute. let's see i want another one that i want to put on my because y'all you all know um my stick my computer is bare now i had to change i had to get a new um Case. Case, and now I have no stickers. Except for your I Love Weirdos one. Except for my I Love Weirdos, you are right. I don't want a Merry Christmas one on there, but I mean, the chicken, I'm not a chicken whisperer. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think all of these, are, like the Valentine's ones are so cute. I know, I need to make Rubes and Georgia some little Valentine shirts. Why was this not out sooner? I don't know. I love ah, it. You better believe next Christmas you'll be seeing me making something with these files. Yeah, we love some mid-century modern Christmas. It's so funny that you love mid-century modern, but you like, we were talking about colored lights and twinkle lights. That's, I know. I, I, if you, you would think if as much as I love mid-century modern, like you would think that I would love the color lights, but it's just, I don't know. I know. I get it. I mean, you can like what you want to be liking, you know? Anyway. These are some really cool print and cut files. I feel like we just keep scrolling and I'm just like, I don't know. We have a lot of really good, like our print and cut game has been stepped up if I'm being really honest with mm -hmm. you guys. I feel like it's like on another level right now. Right. Um, so there's a lot of really cool options. And like those watercolor ones, y'all have been going crazy. Y'all love the, the watercolor cow, ones. The cow, oh my gosh. This Christmas tree. I love it. Chef's kiss. Chef's kiss. Chef's kiss. I'm just not. Nothing's like, I, tickling no, your fancy. No, it's not. It's not that. It's not because they are like I like them. They're super cute. But like I'm very weird. Like I have to love, love a sticker to put it on my laptop. Is that weird of me? No, I feel you. I, I have to love it. Like I haven't put any. All of mine are. I feel like we could do it like a museum. I know. Most of mine are. Um, 
The marble the background timber. is super cute and is very useful for yes. like cutting out a shape that you want or even with sublimation. <gasps> yes. That marble background is everything. And y'all can use those. The print and cut files are really good to use also for sublimation. Very much so. Okay, you know what? We're just going to do the Stanley and the Lucky You just because that's just what I'm doing. So I'm going to download or I'm shoot. I didn't. I did not unzip, y'all. What am I doing? Oh, no. Oh, okay. Let's Unzipper. go back. So, I'm going to cancel browse. I'm going to go back to my finder here. Lucky you. Pop in there. Come on, Cricket. Oh, I need to cancel this. Okay. Um, complex, just because. Continue. Um, apply and continue, and we want to do the print and cut image. Upload. And we are going to select that, add it to Canvas. Probably going to, oh, I knew it. I said, probably going to come in pretty big. Pretty big. It's a big one. She's a big one. <laughs> okay, I don't want it like super big on my laptop, but I think like that would be a good size. Yeah. And we'll size this one. Ooh. <gasps> oh, <gasps> Cardinal Lord. sin. Cardinal sin. Oh, you know what? I meant to get on to you about something. What? That um, that print and cut project that you did with the sticky notes, and there was a floral hexagon. That was not that bad. <laughs> No. Excuse you, that was not bad. <laughs> Tanner was like, and then you're going to shrink it? And I was like, Lauren did not make that project. <laughs> she would never <laughs> warp a PNG I file. did. I did. It did but look, it was it not bad. Good. No, it did not okay. look bad. It didn't, and I said, I said that, but I was like, I cannot believe she even did that. Okay, so <laughs> we're just going to do, we'll do two of each. How's that sound? Perfect. So we'll put these two over here to this side. These are going to be our easy peel stickers. These are gonna be our um, kiss cut stickers, okay? So we'll zoom in. Really and truly, if you just wanted to print them out like this, like these two would be good to go. Mm -hmm. If you just wanted to do a kiss cut and no, um, offset or anything these will be these are good to go okay now i want to show you how to do an offset though so that you know what you're doing because the create sticker function does do an offset it leaves out the flattened portion so we're going to do a offset on this one together okay so if you want an edge on your sticker what you're going to do is you're going to go to offset now, 0.25 on this small of a design is going to be pretty large. So you can toggle this back and forth using that slide. If I'm gonna be real honest, y'all, I don't much care for the slide. I like typing in my numbers. So a lot of times I'll start with a 0.1 and see how small or how large it is, and then either go up or down from there, okay? Um, now, what we're going to do is we're going to select apply. From here, you can see the offset is over here. Now, you can go to our color section here and you can play around with your colors, just like we did in the create sticker function. So, you can make it whatever color you want, okay? I really like that color for some reason with that. Mm -hmm. It's giving. That's cute. I really like it. Um, Lorraine has a good question, um, and this could be a whole video, but yes. Um, don't we have a video where you like get a hex code? You teach them how to get hex codes off of PNGs. Mm -hmm. This is like a side note. Mm -hmm. um, but you could totally add a square over that Stanley cup and use change the color of it to the hex code right. of the color of the cup. Lorraine. You can. Can you contour out the words? No. No. You cannot contour a PNG file. No. So a print and cut or a PNG file cannot be contoured. Let me show you a great example. For this cup specifically, if I wanted to contour out this middle and I wanted to have it solid, I go over here and I click it, 
the contour feature is not there. The reason being is because if you look up here at your operations, it says print then cut, okay? You cannot contour a print then cut or a PNG image. Now, if you do want to contour that out, I'm actually gonna go in here to advance and I'm gonna write down this hex code because I don't wanna lose it because when I change it from a um, print and cut to an actual cut file, it's going to change your color. So, and I really like that color and I wanna keep it the same. I also got the hex code for the blue tumbler. Oh, did you? Yeah, because I was, I just was looking okay. after Lorraine asked. That's fine, well, I can show them in a little bit. Okay. I want to we want I want to stick on our stay with our um, kiss cut and our easy peel yeah. stickers right now because I think that's the biggest portion that we need to kind of talk about. But yes. we can show you how you can kind of manipulate. Um, so if you change it because it says print and cut, it says up here in operations it's print and cut. If you change it to basic, it's going to revert back to the gray. Um, and then with it being selected, you can come down here to contour and we can contour out all of those inside pieces. Y'all, that is the exact same thing as if I were to take this, watch, create sticker. We want a die cut. We want a standard border and we're going to change it. Let's change it to the gray like the other one. Do you all see this? It's the exact same. Yep. Okay, the only difference is before, you can toggle on and off. Let's go back from standard to thin. So you can toggle on and off that inside thing, which is exactly what we just did with the contour of the offset. That is all it is. It is a contour, this toggle contours that offset. Okay, do you see that? Mm. So we've already done that here without having to use the create sticker function. So if you decide later on before you flatten it, if you decide, nah, you know what? I really want that inside to be cut. I'm just gonna come in here, deselect it, and it's back, okay? Now, we are gonna change this offset color back to, the, what, back to what I had a while ago, which is here, not that. Beautiful. And from here, what you need to do is select both of these layers. So you can see we have our Stanley Cup and our offset selected. Now to make it a sticker, what we're gonna do is go to flatten. And that's it. If that is the same. So easy. That is the exact same as you coming to create sticker, die cut, adding a border, toggling that interior shape off, and customizing your color. Love it. The exact same, okay? And then you apply. The only difference is it's not, we don't have to hit that flatten because it was just the create sticker function, okay? So I'm just gonna go back, undo that, bring it over here. I have another question when you're ready. Okay, what's your other question? These are just questions that are popping into my brain. I don't normally do this, but, um, what would happen if we pull an SVG in and try to use this create sticker function? Do we need to flatten it first? Can you just add, can you turn an SVG into a sticker and it'll just automatically do it for you? I'm just curious what would happen. I don't know. So that's an SVG. It just does it for you? It just does it for you. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, cool just does it for you. Hmm. Okay. I was curious because like, you know, if you use an SVG, you've got to flatten it and then add the offset normally. Yeah. So but. it's this, it's the same process yeah. as it's just all that create sticker function is all it's doing is creating an offset or, or taking out the flatten portion that yes. you have to do. Literally. That's it. That's it. That is literally it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now if I wanted to add, so that we're, let's just, these are, we said these were kiss cut, right? These are going to be our kiss cut stickers. Mm -hmm. Now, if we want to add an easy peel, okay, for this specific one, I don't want to add an offset. I like 
I like this. I don't want there to be an offset. I just want it to cut around the pink, okay? But if I want it to have a kiss cut, here's what you need to do. And I'm going to do it on this one because it's a lot simpler. And then we're gonna do it again on the Stanley so that we get it in our head exactly how to do it because this is a process, a little bit more of a process. So if you are doing other things, if you are not really paying attention and you really wanna learn how to do easy peel stickers, I need you to come back to me, close out of your tabs because this is where you're gonna to wanna to take notes. You're probably gonna to have to rewatch this video, so just stick with me. You're gonna have questions and that's gonna be amazing, okay? So let me go through the process one time with you and then we'll answer your questions, okay? So to create an easy peel sticker, but still have a kiss cut, what has to happen is the machine has to just kiss cut this portion here, and then it has to cut through another layer here, but you can't change your settings in the middle of a cut. So here is the workaround for doing easy peel stickers. We have our PNG or our sticker that we want selected, okay? We are then going to come to our offset. Now, this is just gonna determine how large of an easy peel you want. If you want it that big, great. We'll just leave it at that so everybody can see it. So we're just gonna hit apply, okay? And I'm actually gonna turn it from black to white because I do not want it to print. And I'm going to make sure that it is on the basic cut function, okay? Once again, turning it back to white and I'll actually change our background, our canvas color, so that you all can see this a lot better. Okay, so we have our sticker here and we have our offset in a basic cut. Now, a kiss cut, which is the setting that we're gonna use, has very light pressure. So to cut through the backer, it has to have multiple passes. So what we're gonna do with this offset that is a basic cut function, we are going to duplicate it, not once, but two other times. So now we have three, you can see here, and we're gonna, I'm gonna send it to back. I don't wanna, I wanna zoom in. We're gonna send it all the way to the back. So you can see here, we have one, two, three basic cut functions. We'll move this one back too. You see them here on our layers panel? Is everybody with me? Yes. We have three basic cut offsets to our sticker on this in the center. Now what you need to do, select them all. There are four layers that we have selected, the three basic cuts and our sticker. What we are gonna do, we are going to align them center and now you can't see all three layers but they are there after you have done that remember guys stick with me after you have layered your three offset basic cuts you are going to click attach and now you will have a kiss cut or an easy peel sticker that was great Good job. It's a lot. It is a lot. <laughs> but I want to show you once we go to cut it, how much, e like how it looks. And I really think you all are going to be like, oh my gosh. It's going to click It's going to so click. Hard. It, I promise you it's going to mm -hmm. click. Okay. So let's do it again on our Stanley, except this time I actually want to have an offset. So I want to do the same offset as I have over here. I want to have that same offset because I just really like that color. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we, if you do want to add an offset, okay, I don't wanna add a 0.25 offset. I wanna add a 0.1 offset. That'll be good. We're gonna apply that 0.1 offset, okay? Remember, I want it to be, let's see. We don't want, I don't want to contour this out. I actually want to leave that open. So it's okay that it is a print and cut right now. You're going to change the color. We're changing it to that color that I like. 
and now you're going to select them both and we're going to go ahead and flatten them together okay so we have our sticker. I could have really, really, I could have duplicated this one over on the left-hand side, but we just did it together. So now that it's flattened together, what we're gonna do, we're gonna add another offset, okay? Once again, this is just going to be determined how large or how small you want your easy peel layer to be. We'll go ahead and bump it up to 0.15, and we're gonna hit apply, okay? Remember, it needs to be a basic cut, so let's change it to basic cut. Now, one thing that you do need to do before, especially with this one specifically, okay? Let's look at, if you can see over here, actually, let's move this guy. So if I left it like this, it's going to cut out the middle of this cup. We don't want that. So you need to make sure that your offset is just the outside so i highly suggest once you add your second offset for your easy peel sticker to come down to contour and hide all your contours okay this is going to allow it to just be outside your sticker that is so strange it is strange Why and i think it's because i did an offset to an offset oh oh yeah 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 so yes, if I did the why. big offset first and then an inset, mm -hmm. it wouldn't have done it, yeah. but it's an offset to an offset. That's so that's why, why it did that. So once again, we're changing it to white because we don't want there to be any color, okay? Um, this is not different. It's just, you. I just wanna make sure this was a simple one, so it wasn't gonna have anything on the inside that was cut out. This was a more complicated one, so you need to, if you're doing the easy peel stickers, when you are, doing your actual easy peel layer you just need to make sure that that offset or that basic cut is solid on the middle okay so once again this outside is what's going to be cut away from the backer so remember because we're doing a kiss cut we want it we want our sticker paper to stay on the backer we need more passes so we're going to duplicate it and make sure we have three so one two three and we're going to select them all we will send them all to back so that it's behind this so we have one two three and then we have our sticker we're going to select them all align center okay so we have our three basic cuts in our print and cut and then we're going to attach Slay. So we have two easy peel <laughs> stickers and we have two kiss cut stickers. Okay. And we're going to cut them on the same sheet. And we're going to cut them on the same sheet. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to go to make it. You can see here they're on the same sheet. Let's go ahead and put our easy peel down here and let's put our kiss cut up here together. Okay. So you all can see which ones are easy peel and which ones are not. Yeah. because These are going to be kiss cut. These are going to be easy peel. Okay. Now what I want to do is click continue. We are going to send this. Have we used the Joy Extra? Yes. I used it for this? a sticker video. Okay. We're going to send it to our printer. I am going to add the bleed because I don't want any white showing on this. And I am going to use system dialog, okay? Then I'm going to select print. It always pops up behind here for me. We are feeding from rear tray, changing it to photo paper and printing it on best. And then print. For those of you that are new to our channel, our favorite sticker paper that we absolutely love is the Zakoto brand from Amazon. Um, we're doing it on matte paper today. That's probably my favorite sticker paper that I use. I'm not saying I don't like glossy because I do like the glossy. There's just a time and place for glossy stickers and matte stickers. Matte's just my favorite. And yes, Janice, you can rewatch, take all the notes that you want. Watch these videos five, six, seven, 20 times over, okay? So when printing, oh, that, the mm -hmm. colors are different, yeah. They look good, but they're not right. And I think it's that printer. I think the color settings need to be played with because, yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, it's not ugly, but it's not what it's I not wanted. It's not right. Yeah. Anyway, I please excuse our printer. We need to work on it. Whoa. Speaking of printers, mm -hmm. um, I took that 9500 home that we broke during a master class. Don't tell me Trey fixed it. Well, so he unclogged it like it was no problem. He was of like, it's fine. Of course he did. And so last night I said I was working on Cricut stuff and he was like trying to fix that printer beside me. Uh -huh. And he was like, send something to the printer. Well, it'll go through, but it won't actually print anything. Like, But the paper will go through. So I think we're like this close to fixing it. Mm. I'm like, how do you just know how to fix stuff? That's going to be awesome. I, I don't understand. Okay, so we have it loaded on our Joy Extra mat. The material, the, the material that we're going to be using is we're going to use the printable sticker paper white green, green, green. liner, liner paper. Okay, printable sticker paper white with the green. Guys, there is one that says gray. Do not get confused with gray and green. Okay? Green. Green. We want the green. Okay. Using it on default pressure. Loading it into our machine. Are you sure you want to cancel the cut? Yeah, I guess. Not sure. Not <laughs> sure, but sure, I guess. Okay. Sure, not sure. Now... Let's, are we overhead, Sadie? Here is where you are going to be able to see the difference with the kiss cut and the regular, or the, and the easy peel, okay? So, taking this off, you can see that the easy peel, it cut all the way through the backer because we had all those layers, but our kiss cut stays on our sticker paper and this light grip might y'all she's you know, new she's she fresh. knows she is not light grip let's just talk <laughs> about it okay that's why we pick our mats based on how they feel okay most of the so, time so let's talk about kiss cut first so if you wanted to do all kiss cut this is what it's going to look like you're going to be able to take all of this off and your stickers are going to stay on your backer okay and like you can weed out if you have anything like this middle portion right here should come out just weed that out and this is what a kiss cut sticker is so this is a kiss cut sticker dang this curling up is about to get on my nerves <laughs> let's cut this bottom portion off just so we can see it so we can see the difference have you seen where they use the heat press to hover over the HTV to uncurl it? Yes. I love that. I know. I bet you could do that with that. I don't know. Okay. Maybe. Let's let's show them all. Okay? Show them. Die cut stickers cut all the way through the backer and you can they're not sticky. Here you go. Die cut stickers, kiss cut stickers stay on the backer and the backer stays intact. And then here we have easy peel stickers so what this is oh no is it has cut through the back of your paper so they're individual stickers but watch we have what we'll do is we'll weed out this outside of the sticker this is why we were saying this is for people to consume your stickers because it's not really saving you any work, but it makes the stickers easier to peel for customers. So this is the easy peel stickers. Once again, this is for your customers, not for you. Yeah, I did not go with gravity. You're right, I should have done that. Okay, so this is the difference between our die cut stickers. The backer is not there. Like we have to kind of sit and work with it. Easy peel stickers, this portion is the backer, just right off, okay? So those are your three types of stickers. And yes, this is, this is the, if I, if I had to say one or the other, and I'm using those to, to hold that down for a minute. Um, probably the easy peel stickers is the best function of the um, create sticker stuff. But like I said, 
y'all can do it yourself and not have Cricut access. Mm -hmm. I just taught you how to do that. Once again, I'm just cutting away, or I'm just peeling away the outside. That way we have the backer there and we have an easy peel sticker, y'all. Beautiful. Look at that. So the project we have today, we really want to, I, we are gonna be making something, but I want to truly focus in on, we're gonna focus in on the technique yes. because the project we're gonna be doing, it is a sublimation project. Yeah. However, this can be done with print and cut. This can be done with printable HTV, printable vinyl. There's so many so different many. things you can do with this project. So. Yeah. I really want to focus on the technique. We're not going to, I mean, we are going to tell you how we do it, what we do, the process with sublimation. Of course, we're going to make it. We're going to make it, but we're really going to focus in on how you all can create basically your own custom alphabet yeah. using a font that we have and a pattern that is found on our website. Yeah. I mean. And we have hacks. We have hacks today where you're going to know how to make the pattern actually look good. Because uh -huh. a lot of patterns end up looking poor and you don't know what they are. So the one hack that we have will just like chef's kiss for you yes. on the process. It'll be really, really good. So let me get this pulled up. Do we have the actual, oh, it's back there. You know what, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We're gonna make this together. You all saw the project on the on the um, thumbnail, so we will make this together in just a second. Um, give me two seconds and let me get this pulled up. On the table, what we have, we have our sublimation blank. Now this is um, linked down below. These came from Michael's, I'm pretty sure. Um, it's just their sublimation blank mug. We love these. They are sublimation ready. You don't have to put anything on them. We do have our um, what do you want to call these? Hot glo heat gloves. We do have a lint roller. We have some scissors. We do have the Condi Dye Trans Pro Spray too. This is the sublimation adhesive spray that you can spray on your print and place it on your blank. And then the biggest and most important thing, especially if you are using a sublimation oven, in my opinion, is going to be these silicone wraps. These are to keep the sublimation print snug to your design. Now, I know we tape things down. I know we spray things. I know we try our best to get this down. But remember, when we use a heat press or something else, we always tell you that what activates Lauren, the sublimation. I hate to tell you. So, with that being said, we are going to, let's just go ahead and hop over to Design Space. Let's do that. So, what you're going to need, we are using two different text or two different fonts today. We are going to have to download one of them, and I'm going to show you exactly how we're going to do that. That is why, this one's not downloaded. That's why it's doing this. So, what we're going to do is we're going to hop over to Maker's Gonna Learn. We're gonna go to fonts, okay? And then, mm, you have to be a member. Well, I am a member. <laughs> Maker's gonna learn. What are you doing? Okay, we're gonna go to our fonts. And what we're gonna do, the font that we're gonna be using today is Miranda. So we're just going to search for that font. We are going to click the arrow pointing down, which is our download button. And then we are going to double click, open that back up. We are going to double click that OTF, that is the font file. Here you see it's going to open up our font book. Now if you are a Windows user, it is going to be called a character map. It is the same process. You are still going to download, you are still going to double click to open, and you are still going to double click to open that font. Now when you get to this point, it's going to look a lot different but it's still going to be at the bottom where you can hit install font. What you're gonna do, make sure that font is installed. From there, we're gonna go back to design space, not to our finder. And then we are going to go to view and we are going to reload design space. Now, excuse me, if 
you are working on something and you haven't saved it. You need to save before you reload because if you don't save and then you reload, guess what? You're gonna lose everything you've just worked on. So make sure that you save before you reload. I've not worked on anything yet, so I'm just gonna hit reload. What that's gonna do, it is going to reload Cricut Design Space and then it's going to recognize the new font that you have uploaded onto your computer. Now, did you guys know that a font that you have downloaded from Makers Gonna Learn, you download to your computer, you can use in multiple programs, not just Cricut Design Space. Yeah. Boom. There you go. So, what you are then going to do, the next font that we're going to be using, hand get, let's talk about this hack real quick. Ooh. Because I, I forgot what font this was. Mm. It looks very similar to the font that I used yesterday on Asher's name, and I'm pretty sure it is. But Sin's letting us know that might be misspelled up there. Claws. It is. We'll fix that real fast before we move on with the hack, Sin. We are so blessed to have you here. It is. What would we do without? If y'all didn't no know, Sin, e. yeah, Sin has been on our team for many years, and she proofreads everything that goes out here. God love you. Oh, you know what? I just deleted that, and I needed that font. Mm -hmm. So the hack, the hack, the hack, is if you hover over this and you right-click, and then you scroll all the way down to image info, you can see the selected font is Daydream. So now I can, I know that this is Daydream. I can delete that out. I can go back to text. I can grab a text box. I can go to my fonts, systems, search for daydream. Boom. It is the same font we used yesterday. Look at that because we had an issue with the X. And we're just going to type in clause like that. Now, remember what I said yesterday about kerning fonts? We're going to have to kern this one, guys. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to advanced, ungroup to letters, click this S, and then we are going to place it where it is going to look the best. I'm trying to figure out where I want it. I think that's gonna look the best. I mean, it's kinda going, the word is kinda going up, but I really don't know how else I would want it. Yeah, it looks really, it's gonna look really good. Do we like it better down? So this is gonna be a personal preference. Yeah. You can either move the S down where it's connected this way, which is probably if I was writing this out, how like that's how I would write it. I would come up, S, down, and back. I don't much care for it there because it just looks like it's moving up. So we're Whoa. going to... Yeah, it has, that, that looks balanced. This looks a lot more balanced. Yeah. So we're just going to, this. that's what kerning fonts is, is moving, um, moving things around. So once we have done that, we're gonna select all of this and I'm going to go to combine and unite those back together. And then I'm just gonna change the color of those to a beautiful red color. Now, this is just, what we're gonna do next is really the meat of this project. So I'm gonna make this bigger, make our mama bigger. And I'm actually, let me hide claws for right now so I can get it out of the way and show you guys what we're gonna be doing. So you're going to choose a pattern that you want. Now the key with this is whatever pattern you choose, you don't want to make your pattern too large, okay? Because let's say we make this pattern this big to cover the whole word, right? So we love the pattern when it's smaller, but if you wanted to slice this whole pattern out of this word, let me show you what happens. And then I'll just, I can just undo, okay? So what you would do if, this is why we don't do it large, because we wanna see the details of the trees. So if we just do it to cover the whole word and then hit slice, Look what happens. You lose all of the details of the trees, like the trees are gone. It does not look near as good. So what you're gonna want to do, let's back, back, back. What I want to do next 
So you saw how if you make your pattern large, that you lose the integrity of the pattern and you don't want to do that. So what you need to do is make your pattern as small as you can to fit your letter. Now, my suggestion to you, we have mama topped out. We love that. But what we're gonna do, because when I come over here, it's kind of hard to fit that there and then not hit this other letter. What I like to do is go to, that's not a slice result. Oh, I guess it is. It was a slice result because I sliced through it. Yeah. It's all good. It's all good. We're going to, let's just type in mama again because this is what's going to happen if you have an actual font. Let's type in Miranda. This is the font we're using. We're going to get rid of this mama. We're going to type in mama. There we go. Make it a little bit bigger. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to advanced. Once again, I'm gonna ungroup to letters. That way each of these individual letters are separate and now I can place this A on top of the Christmas trees. I can even make it a little smaller. And this is the hack, y'all. If you wanna know the secret about working with patterns, it's doing this because now you'll see so many more trees mm -hmm. in the pattern. So now we're gonna select both the A and the trees. Actually, what you may wanna do before you that is duplicate our tree pattern yeah. so we have an extra and we don't have to go back and download it. So smart. Um, but we are going to select both the A and the Christmas tree pattern and come down here to slice. So now you can see that we do have an A sliced out of that Christmas tree pattern. We're gonna delete that and delete that. And y'all, now you can see more of those Christmas trees. And I love that. So next we're gonna do the M. I want to bring this to front. So we're gonna go to arrange, bring to front so that it is in front of these Christmas trees. That fits perfectly there in that square. And that A has six different trees in it. Like you can see so much. Yeah, and so the other many. one when we made the pattern mm -hmm. big enough to fit the whole word, you might have gotten one Barely. tree. You wouldn't even see a full tree. Really. You wouldn't see if you did no, not see not a full at tree at all. Not okay. All. Um, so what you're going to do now is bring these two together and then slice those out. And I didn't duplicate that, but it's okay because you know what? With this project, we don't need it anymore. Right. So now we have the two letters that we're going to use. Now, if you are using more letters than for mama or whatever, obviously you're gonna repeat that process. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to duplicate this and duplicate the A, and then I'm gonna show you another hack, okay? Are you all ready for this hack? So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna select all of these letters. We are going to go to align. We are going to distribute them horizontally. Okay, did y'all see what just happened? So if you want the letters super close together, you can move them closer, you can kind of line them up. It doesn't really matter. Um, like, so we have, if we wanted, the A here and we wanted mama to fit within, let's say we wanted mama to fit within this A and that M. If we wanted it spread out a lot. You see how there's a big gap here. What we can do if we want to make sure there's even amount of space in between each letter, we can select them, align, distribute horizontally, boom. Boom. If we want them closer, we bring this A in closer to that M, even though it's overlapping that second M, Watch this. Select them all, align, distribute horizontally. Lauren, now that's the hack that should have been in the 20 hacks. Any 20 more Cricut hacks to take a beginner to a pro? I didn't even know that. You didn't know that? How all many you, of us? All these? you have to do is have your first letter and your last letter, the space that you mm. want it to be, and then have the other letters selected and distribute mm. horizontally. Y'all, did you just learn something? I just learned something. And I've, Look, been, I've been teaching y'all for like a half a decade. <laughs> Look, I even moved that A in a little bit more because I wanted a yeah. little bit closer together. Select them all, align, distribute horizontally. Okay, And then while they're all selected, uh -huh, I know what you're go doing. back to align, 
and we can align them to Boom. the bottom. Boom, that A needed to be brought down. Look at that. Look. Guys, we just learned something together. How amazing is that? Our minds are blown. So watch this. We're gonna have this A there, that M. And now they do have to be within, you know, each other. So look at them now, okay? They're all spread out everywhere, right? We're gonna select them all, align. We're gonna first distribute horizontally, okay? Then we're gonna align and align them to the bottom. Boom. That is so good. Yeah, Megan says, Tanner, you need to watch more of the lives. I sure darn do. People are teaching all sorts of stuff I've never even done before. And if you guys haven't seen our 20 more cricket hacks to take you from beginner to pro, it debuted Sunday and it already has like close to 10,000 views. So super yep. cool. Um, so for some reason I lost the claws because it's not on the layers But you can panel. build it again. We're gonna build it again. But before we do that, we're gonna go to combine uh, we don't want to weld that together. Now, this is why I have a lot of people ask this question, I feel like, in customer service. Why can't I combine? Why can't I unite? Why can't I do this? Well, y'all, first of all, this is a print and cut. So that's why you can't do anything. You can't, you cannot use any of these combined functions other than weld with a print and cut feature. Okay? Yeah. It has to be a basic cut function for you to be able to use you not subtract intersect and exclude right. so the workaround for that what you can and need to do if you are wanting to keep your stuff together is instead of i would not go to weld yet because we never know we may want to move it around again i want to go to attach and we're just going to attach those all together okay that's the function that you're going to use if you are working with print and cut features okay now, I lost the claws. We're going to go build it again. We're going to go back to our text. We're going to go to our font Daydream. We're going to select that and we're going to type in claws. Once again, we're going to have another, another little fun kerning, um, kerning hack. We're going to un ungroup to letters. We're going to show you how to do this. So we've got these ungrouped. We're going to select our S. We're going to move it down, make it more balanced. Um, I'm going to move my U over just a tiny bit more, select my S, move it over just because I am um, very weird and I have to have everything right with this. Okay, now we're, you see now, because all of these letters say basic cut underneath them, now we have the option to use all of these combined features. So now we're going to unite but we're not, it's not gonna be a, a combined feature here. We're not, it's not gonna be basic cut for too much longer. So what we're gonna do now, we are going to place our claws where we want it underneath our words. Now, once again, this is going to be a personal preference. If you want the claws to be over top of the mama, which I think looks good, you can do that. You can have it out to the side. You can center it here. You can do it in front, all the way in front. All of this is going to be a design preference, okay? There are a couple different things that you can do. If you want to leave it like this, what you can, to see what it would look like once it prints, I would go to, I would select both of them and flatten them together. And you can see we kind of just lose the top of this just a little bit. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go, I'm going to unflatten them. We're going to change claws. Um, we're just going to leave it as a print and cut, but what we're going to do, we're going to add an offset to claws. Now I don't want a large offset. We're just going to do, let's try point 0.1. I think I like the point 0.1. You're going to apply that. Now, because this is a print and cut feature, you don't have to slice out the mama. Really, all you have to do is go to your colors. You can change your colors to white, and it gives you the same effect as if you were working with basic cut and having to cut this out. Now, I feel like we have done this hack a few times when we are cutting um, vinyl and HTV and things like that, and we have to slice it out and everything else. But the cool thing with um, print and cut is you don't have to slice. So let's change our color of our canvas so you can actually see what I'm talking about. Love you see it. how this is now um, an offset. If you wanted to change the color of the offset, you could do that. 
but because we're putting it on a white surface and I want it to look like it is cut out of the mama, I'm just gonna leave it white. So I am going to take this, we are going to flatten all this together. I'm gonna change my canvas back to white because that's the color of the blank that I'm using and it looks like you have sliced out mama. So good. And you have the claws in there with it. Okay. Love it. We got it. Look how good it looks, Lauren. I love it. Yes. And Michelle made a really good, um, comp ma like made a good observant. She said, I'm not a super huge fan of that font, but that's okay because membership gives me access to thousands of fonts. Yeah. So she is obviously still winning. Oh, yeah. This may not be your favorite font. That's okay. Um, you can choose from the hundreds of fonts that we have on our website. Now, one thing I do want to make sure that you all know and understand, especially if you are trying to create um, your own alphabet, a new alphabet with the pattern that you want. Let's say you have um, an event coming up, a birthday party. Birthday party is a great example. And let's say you're doing a birthday party for a little somebody in your life, maybe your grandchildren, your child, whatever, and tie-dye is the first like big pattern that comes to mind and they want something like with a shirt that says their name in a tie-dye font on it i suggest using a block font it's always going to look better if you have a block font because yeah. you're going to be able to see the pattern through it you can find um, we have so many tie-dye patterns on our website go on there look around um, pick a pattern have their name if you don't have access to do sublimation no worries. No you worries. can do this on printable HTV. Yeah. And it gives you the exact same yes. effect. And it's still be a beautiful shirt. Now, have you showed them how to flatten yet? I did. Oh, it's all flattened. Yep. So now. I selected all of it and I flattened yeah. it. Now, this is where the going gets good. Today, we're about to sublimate. Mm -hmm. But like Lauren's saying, if you don't have sublimation, if you don't do that, no worries. You can do it any other way. You would just do it with your material. So we're gonna sublimate today, Yep. but get ready. I already saw some of you asking questions, our sublimation process going up. So if you wanna get that, just hurry before Sunday, super good. I'm so excited to put it on this mug. We're gonna be using it. Lauren, we're gonna have to start making some hot lattes and the espresso know. maker. I know. I love it. So it what so we're gonna do now, I am going to grab my mug this is the only thing about these mugs is they get a little heavy on one side. Right, so right, I have to right. put something underneath the, um, the little handle. So I want to measure the area that I'm going to be working with to see how large I truly want it to be. With this mug specifically, I mean, we're looking at three and a half. You could go up to four if you want to, but like it's gonna wrap halfway around the mug. So I don't know, that just, it's really a personal preference. Um, if you want it on the side, if you, it's gonna look the best if it's on, you know, one side. So I'm thinking, and you all can, you know, drop your comments what you think you would do. I'm thinking three and a half, four at most. So let's go back to design space. We are going to um, change the width because we're, the width I said, we didn't want it any wider than four inches. So I'm gonna make sure that my design is locked. You can see here it is unlocked. So if I go in to type the width as four, it's gonna move all of this in and stay the same height. And we do not want that. So we're gonna move the width into, let's just do four to begin with. See what I mean? I even told you guys not to do it and I did it myself. <laughs> now it says it's locked. So there. there. It, it, it resized it the way it should. Jan says three and a half for me, all of that. Um, it And April said, are you supposed to put that so you can view it or on the other side for people to see? That is the great debate when it comes to mug making. I think it's for other do people you to put see. It, do you put it on your side for you to see it? Do you put it on this side for other people to see it? Which side do you use? Which mm. which hand do you use to drink your coffee? Do you use your right hand or do you do your, use your left hand? Wow. I say for that, you put it on both sides. <laughs> I mean, I don't I know. It's, it. it's It really I is. It. I've seen so many people debate over that, like, which side do you put it on? 
I'm with Tanner. Yeah. I think it would go on the side that other people see. Um, but, and that's another thing, like does your customer use their left hand to drink their coffee? Which, co which hand would you use to, drink, to use a mug with? I would use I my left. It, yeah, I, was, I think it would be my left. I would use like, my left. Because I'm texting with my right. You know what I'm saying? Like I got, I got work to do. It's comfortable. For I don't me to drink hold it a lot my... of hot things, so it's you know I'd like, probably put an iced coffee in there. When I go to pick it up. Yeah, left hand. It's left hand. Okay, this, these are really good questions, and just to let you guys know, I didn't even know this. The pattern from the mama is actually a maker's gonna sublimate file. So I saw a member looking oh. for that. I went to tell you like, look at the description for the link, and it's actually from our sublimation course. So we okay. always put our supply list down below. And if you're a member, we always link our files used. So that's available to you in the description box down below. But so. did you all know, go over to our- Shared screen. Share screen. Did you know that we have a section in the, on the Makers Gonna Learn website that just has patterns? So really and truly, you can go there and you can find lots of different patterns Maybe just search here. Christmas patterns. See if there's any like Christmas pattern. I don't know. It'd be so cool if we could find some that you could use on the platform, which oh, I know there are. Oh, we know. I can oh. already oh, tell you gosh. this one. I love no, this look at one. The, look at that one down this in the one, bottom. This like, one is oh. one of my favorites too. Mm. I've used it multiple times. I love that one. Um, there is mm, another so one that I thought had trees. Just take some time going through the Christmas section of the website. That's yes. my secret. There's thousands. We have a huge category of Christmas. This one just has a lot of options. Let's, let's talk about this one real quick. This one is not one that you would think that you could use, but because there are lines on the bottom, you could make your letters small enough because I love the little green details and I love the colors like the tan, like peachy and the red together. Yeah. Make your letters small enough and just slice out of the bottom mm. of that would be beautiful. These that. are things that I feel like you all need to think about when you're creating things. Just because this says poinsettia Christmas card does not mean it's only a card file. Right, there are right. so many things that you can use for this. Yeah. So you could use the bottom half of this to customize and make your own like striped pattern, like can yes. striped candy pattern. Yes. This one's cute too. Yeah, like, super good. Okay, well let's get this project okay. going because guess who's gonna stop by? Alicia with her baby. <gasps> She's coming over. She's oh my bringing God. the baby. <laughs> okay, well let's turn this, let's turn this oh, oven on real quick. I love it, I love it. We I are using it. the oven today. So I've just duplicated this. We'll put it on both sides just to be funsies, I guess. Um, we are, um, I, like I said, I'm just, I just duplicated it. We are printing it on eight and a half by 11. We're gonna go to, and I'm gonna move it away from our black edges there. We're gonna go to continue. We are going to send it to printer. Um, we are going to turn bleed off and use system dialog, okay? So good. From there, we're gonna click print. We're gonna pull this down. It's gonna pop up back here. We are gonna be using the SureColor F170 series today. I'm going to give Yay. me just a second, make Come sure it is over, turned on. Come back over, y'all, what questions? You and it? when he says, save you time and money on. Lauren has invested days recently doing some updates, so. Let me, yeah. let's, let's go to one. Let's talk about this. So, I don't know if you all know or understand, but with sublimation, there are different brands of sublimation ink, as well as different printers. With each printer, there are different settings. With each type and brand of ink, there different are different settings. settings. So what we have done, we have, we're te we teach you, and one of the things we're actually gonna be adding that is not in the course now, we talk about the Epson ET8550, which is our go-to wide format printer now. I have spent two long, grueling days testing and testing and testing and getting the color profiles right so that you all get the best print quality and the best colors out of this conversion printer, okay? So when I tell you there's 15 blanks out there that I have <laughs> sublimated on, yeah. I'm not lying. Yeah. And Tanner did the same thing when we created the course in the beginning. Two, yeah, over two years ago. Using yeah. Starcraft sublimation ink. So we've so, tested a lot and we're continually pouring in. And if you yes. join the program 
in 2021, you get all the updates. So all these new files that I always said I would never add more files to the sublimation course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're getting those coming next week. So it'll be really good. So excited. So somebody did ask a good question. I saw that somebody asked, do you not have to print in reverse? Yes, you do have to mirror your image, but with the Epson it, or the Epson SureColor, because it is already set up to be a sublimation printer, it, re, it has a setting where it mirrors everything automatically. And the reason that I had the hardest time when we got this printer, because I kept turning mirror on and every time I would print and it would print it regular. And I'm like, what is yeah. going on? But it has a setting where it automatically mirrors it for you. So you don't have to remember it every single time, which I do love about that. Okay. Love it. So what we're going to be doing now, we're turning it to this side because we're just going to do this side first. What I'm doing now, I have cut off the registration marks from Cricut Print and Cut. Don't need that. I'm actually going to take the, um, the sublimation adhesive spray. Now, I just want you guys to be aware, this is very sticky. Mm -hmm. So you're going to want to hold it kind of away and we're just going to do a, that's all, that's all you need. Once that is down, it's going to be very tacky. We're going to lay that on our cup. You see how well that lays down like, oh, I just love that spray. Okay, that's it. What I'm going to do next. I don't know if you all heard when we were going over all of the um, supplies. This is my absolute favorite thing to use, especially if you are going to be doing sublimation in a, an oven. You definitely need to take off your plastic lid. That does not need to be in there. And what we're going to do now is we're going to place our silicone wrap around our cup. You can still use tape. We just love for this project to use the spray. It's definitely up to you. Yes, you can use tape. We, I still use tape all the time. Yeah. Um, so what this wrap does, because we're not using a press. Now, you all know we have a press. We love a tumbler press. Oh. If I were, if we were being honest, I would have probably used a tumbler press today. But I know that most of our people don't have a tumbler press. Right. So we want to make sure that we honor that and we recognize that yeah. you all don't have a tumbler press and teach you how to do it with the, like the best way to do it with the cheapest option possible. Yeah. Now Super we, good. I did have some questions. Do you need to put it on both sides? Actually, once I printed this out, I realized how large that was. And if I would have put it on both sides, it would have almost touched each other. Yeah. So I'm not going to. I just put it on the side facing outward, depending on how you hold it. Um, if you do put a design on both sides, yes, you need to do them both at the same side, on, on the same at the same time. Um, we also had somebody say that the wrap is out of stock. Y'all, all you have to do is search Amazon silicone mug wrap. Love and it's going it. to pop up. You can actually get them in like um, sets of like different sizes. You can get the skinny tumbler wrap, all of the above. So what we're going to do now, we're going to come over here to our sublimation oven. Oh, we're doing it 400 degrees, two set, tw two minutes one way. We're going to flip it and do it two minutes the other way, Love just it. so that it gets a really good um, even heat, like yep. heat all the way around it. Otherwise, if you don't do that, a lot of times what's going to happen is it's going to give you ghosting, okay? Yes. Another thing that I very, I, like I highly, highly um, dis discourage, let's say, I discourage y'all yep. to do this. Ask me how I know. Put butcher's paper in the bottom of this. Mm, don't do don't it. Don't do it. We have the footage of Lauren we catching have the it footage. on fire. We have the footage. I actually you cannot it on my do this. You cannot do this on, in a regular oven. That's a no. great question. You no. Cannot do that. You need to have an actual um, designated sublimation oven. Yes. Because for once sure. you sublimate in an oven, it needs to stay a designated sublimation oven because it does release yep. fumes. Now, does it release enough fumes for me to be able to smell it right now? No. no. Mm -mm. Uh, April says, when you open the door, do you lose a lot of heat? You'll lose a little heat, but it's not any, I mean, it's very warm. 400 yeah. degrees is hot. I love it. So we are reaching the two minute mark. So I'm going to come back around here just because it's Ooh. so much easier for me to do it from oh, this yeah. side. I love that. And then after that hits five minutes, because I put it in at seven, I'm mm -hmm. going to turn it. 
and then we will let it go for two Pinky, minutes. Pinky, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so excited that you're joining the membership today. So excited. We've had so many new members. Get in there, join the Facebook group, intro yourself, let us know who you are, what you craft. We'd love to meet you over in our member only Facebook group. Click on your dashboard and you'll see the link to the Facebook group. So good, so good. I am. Um, it is a convection oven. Yes. Yeah, we love this that. one came from Walmart. It is the Gourmia French uh, French door um, convection oven. I think you can get it uh, right at a hundred dollars. Sometimes cheaper. We have had so many people that have found convection, like tabletop convection ovens, um, at yard sales. Yep. At secondhand, oh, like yeah. Goodwill. I got we got ours at Black Friday, so Black and Friday. And we got it for like fifty dollars. Yeah, on Black Friday. it was great. It was back in it was it was a while ago, but still, it was it was awesome. This so you'll one love could it. be done in the mug press, yes. But my only thing, if you don't have a mug press yet, I don't think you need that. It's a if you if you're gonna just do mugs. Yeah, but like this gives you the option to do. We highly recommend the oven over and so many other things. Yep. We love that. Now I need a coffee. Yes, you do. Uh, you sure do. So good. Also, as you all can see, I just went ahead and put both of these on we because I know I'm going to so be handling good. it with that both. That is so smart. I hear Ruby do, and I'm super <laughs> excited. I know. I'm so excited to see the baby. So good. So, so good. But yes, cannot wait. Let us know if you have any questions, what we're going to do is once this comes out, we're gonna let it cool for a second, show y'all, and then we'll be wrapping up. So if you have questions. Ooh, we a little, little bit smoky. Yeah, I love it. Okay, Aww. now let's go overhead. We're gonna pop this okay. guy off here. Can Tina lay her skinny tumblers down in the oven, do you think? Oh, look at look that, y'all. Look at how good that looks. Ooh, love it. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. But I about we, grabbed it with this hand. We love this project. I mean, I want to touch it so bad. It is such, like, the colors are beautiful. If you're mm -hmm. not getting these colors with your printer, what are you doing? Oh, like, get, get the sublimation course. I know many of you are ready for it. Um, is this tumbler ready to use after it cools? Yeah, ink absolutely. Totally. Ready the, to use. Ready what to happens is that ink turns into a gas and gets absorbed into that thing. I it mean, so cool. if we want to get scientific, there's a whole process of that. You got to watch the course to find out. You do. <laughs> um, 